Welcome to Experience Michigan, everybody. I am Rick Hummer, and where am I? I'm at the old Amish Acres. I mean, it's still gonna be somewhat Amish Acres, but not Amish Acres. I'll give you more details on that coming up. And yes, there's gonna be food. Always a good thing. Hey, you know, we've got a really busy show today because the reason why, well, Kelly's gonna be talking to the Bergamot. Of course, they are stuck out in Arizona right now. They've been performing every night, 54 nights straight. They haven't lost their voice. They're still going strong. They got a passion for music and they're gonna share that with us today. Also, there's a national documentary coming out on ABC that's being produced by a local company right here in Michiana about Nicholas Black Elk. And this is a really good documentary. I can't wait to see this. But that'll be coming up. We'll be talking with them. And of course, uh, Kelsey's heading to North Webster. He's going out to the uh, Clayton Garden Center. And uh, did I say that right, Kelsey? Thumbs up? Yeah, all right, cool. I wanna make sure. Yeah, but he's going out to the Clayton Garden Center in North Webster. Webster. Uh, but first, we definitely have to go in here because I am smelling fried chicken. I'm not kidding you. And I, I have to go. But we've got to go inside. And we're outside, by the way. We are definitely outside. Well, I got to say, what a great place to finally get out and get out and about in Michiana. And well, I'm here with Mark McDonald. And Mark, you know, we're standing in the old barn here at Amish Acres. Yes, we are. A lot of tradition at this place. I mean, tons. I can remember from the time that I was a little kid coming here with my grandma and up until just about a year, a year ago, I think was the last time I got a chance to sit down and eat. But you guys are taking over the food here, right? Yes, we are. The first day of operation is this Friday from four to eight. This Friday and Saturday will be our first two days operating. And I'll let my daughter, Laurel Marnoka, tell you a little bit more about some of the specifics and the details of sure. what we're serving and what we're doing. But I just wanted to catch that everybody has asked me, well, how did you come to be here? Yeah. You're in yeah. South Bend. Napanee. Yeah. It's only 30 miles, but uh, it is a change of pace and menu from what we usually do. Yeah, and let me explain to folks too. Uh, Mark's with LaSalle. Uh, you're with LaSalle yeah, LaSalle Grill. Hospitality yep. Group, which is LaSalle Grill, LaSalle Kitchen and Tavern on the third floor of the building, sure. and LaSalle Catering, which is a 50 mile radius out of South Bend. So that would encompass Napanee. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're within our marketing area. There you go. And you know what made you guys want to come down here? Uh, Napanee, such, it is such a different yeah, uh, you know, it, palette. So it is, it is something that I had been to with my children. Uh, at the end, near the end of August, when they would have the uh, big arts and crafts festival, and we'd sure. wander around and then go somewhere to an amusement park, and then go back to school. A fellow named Marlon Stutzman, yeah. with a couple of partners, and Jason Bontrager and uh, uh, John Cruz. Hey, I got to call time out. out. I got to call time out. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, Do you good. see what just happened here? The is, chicken's here. Is this, this is the chicken. The shot, this awesome. is the first oh. batch of roasted chicken. Look at that. Nice and crispy. Those are big pieces. And we're gonna, you're welcome to uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> grab one when we're done. When we're done. Back to the story how we came yeah, to be. Yeah. I, I read the article in the paper the next day after the auction and saw Marlon Stutzman's name. I said, well, I know Marlon. I've got his name in my phone. And I called him the na that morning after reading the paper and said, hey, what are you doing for food service? He said, well, I'm glad you called me. <laughs> <laughs> and so we talked and talked and uh, came up with an arrangement that we would be the food service contractors. And we've been, we, we had intended to open for Easter. Okay. Yeah. But that wasn't in the card. So no, 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 not this time. We, yeah. uh, we put that back and uh, we'll be doing uh, our first holiday will be Memorial Day. Excellent. And then hopefully a big one for the 4th of July when Indiana opens wide opens up again. all up, yeah. The menu, is it gonna change a lot? Because this smells a lot like fried chicken that I've smelled in this building before. I mean. Well, uh, the big, con if there's any controversy uh, existing uh, on social media, as it always will, <laughs> is people asking, is the Thresher's dinner gonna be there? <laughs> well, it will be akin to it, but we have renamed it the Farm Feast. Excellent. And instead of being served family style at as it always was, at least at first it'll be on a plate. Sure. A uh, single serve plate right. because that the is regulations the regulations. Yeah. But we hope to be able to accommodate what everybody wants down the road. There you go. Yeah, you, you know? got to do what you got to do. And right we now. will have another, you know, and added things to the menu. Well, let's talk to the daughter here coming up and, you know, in the meantime, take a look around. Uh, Kelsey did some great shots out here. Of course, this is a beautiful property. Well, we got a chance to catch up with Laurel over here in Laurel Marnoka. Uh, you know, just spoke with your dad. The chicken came out, and look, the, they took the chicken away from me. <laughs> they wouldn't let me eat it. But, you know, I, I have a feeling I can still smell it, so I'm going to find it. 
you know, I know this has probably been a little trying. You guys just jumping into this year and then having all this, you know, hit with the, you know, the virus or whatever you want to call it. So here we are. How hard has this been for you guys? I know there's a lot of probably different steps you've had to take. Yeah. So it's it's been a bit um, stop and go. You know, we we. We found out we were going to be the partners here for the food and beverage, and we started cleaning the kitchen and pulling out, you know, the junk and, and going through <laughs> things. And then coronavirus hit, yeah. and everything was shut down, and we left. And then we came back. So yeah. we came back, and it, it's like hurry and hurry and stop and hurry and stop. So we are excited to announce that we are finally opening um, this Friday, yes. um, four to eight. We'll be open this weekend, Friday and Saturday night, four to eight. Um, we're we're in the process still of hiring staff. Um, we've hired about 10 um, servers, busers, bartenders, um, hosts, people like that, um, that some are used to work here. Sure. Um, and some are brand new. If you could smell the food we just smelled just a second ago, and there's more stuff coming out too, right? Yeah, so we've, we've here all um, <laughs> added to the whole menu. Um, we, we want to honor what Ama Shakers was and the Thresher's meal, sure. um, but we also want to put our LaSalle spin on it. Um, we're known for great food too, so um, we, want to, we want to showcase some of that. Um, we've added things such as a, a barbecue beef brisket. Um, <laughs> we've added um, uh, some meats from Stutzman Brothers Meats because Marlon Stutzman, our partner here, um, also owns that. So we are able to do like a Wagyu meatloaf. Um, they're little individual ones, just the oh. cutest little meatloaf you yeah. ever saw. They make you feel um, taller too. <laughs> exactly. So we're excited for some of the new menu twists. Um, we're just giving people more options. So all I can tell you is, you, you had me at brisket. So there you go. <laughs> Once again, it's you know, is is the name going to stay the same? So no, um, the the entire property is now going to be called the Barns at Napanee. It does have a tagline, Home of Amish Shakers, so that people that might be looking for that sure, Amish Shakers, sure. they're still going to be able to see that it's the same place. Yes. Um, but our operation here will be called LaSalle Farm and Table. So the actual restaurant is LaSalle Farm and Table. There you go. And we'll see you out here. And of course, congratulations, guys. Thank you. Well, I gotta say, the fried chicken is scrump delicious, and I cannot wait to do a gad section here. And for those of you that don't know what gad means, it means grub a dub dub. And that's what we're gonna do in there. And if, if I can do this, as long as my ride doesn't leave me, I might go back in there and do it again. But that's coming up. But so thank you, Mark, and thank you, Laurel, for that. And of course, have camera, will travel. South Dakota, here we come. A local Michiana group has been out pr uh, producing this wonderful documentary on Nicholas Black Elk. Well, let's just take a look. One of the local media companies produced this amazing documentary that tells a great story, and we're going to find out about it today. And to tell me uh, about it is Sister Judy Zielinski. And uh, Judy, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to, to talk with me today. First of all, this is a, this is a PBS-style name of the show. Tell us what the name <laughs> of the documentary is and why this was important to, to tell the story. Sure. Uh, the documentary is called Walking the Good Red Road. The Nicholas Black Elk's journey to sainthood. <laughs> Almost forgot, um, and it's a it's an important story because in the Catholic Church today there are no male American Native American saints, and Nicholas Black Elk, who was a holy man and a medicine man of the Oglala Sioux peoples, uh, became Catholic and is now of all things, up for sainthood in the Catholic Church. So uh, it, it's important because he would be the first Native American male saint. Now, uh, tell us where he was from and, and then how you guys got connected to this story. Sure. He was born in the pre-reservation era. So there were no fences, there were no state lines. The Native Americans roamed where they will where they would and uh, hunted and gathered and uh, you know camped for, and then moved with the seasons. So Nicholas was made famous in a 1934 book called Black Elk Speaks, written by a man named John Nyhart, and it became a very popular book in the 1970s because a lot of people suddenly became attuned to ecology and various uh, kinds of spirituality, cultural expressions of spirituality. And so he kind of became this icon of a Native American way of life that had disappeared. And the book actually ends with him standing on a cliff and looking out over the Black Hills and kind of praying in sadness for the way of life that had ended. 
What wasn't included was that 25 years earlier, Nicholas had been baptized a Catholic and had been living as a Catholic as a, like a parish leader uh, on the reservation. So uh, when the announcement came in 2017 that the church was going to pursue sainthood for him, people were like, what? Black Elk? <laughs> you know, we thought he was the, no one even knew he was Catholic, mm -hmm. much less up for sainthood. So we heard uh, about the cause being open. The process for becoming a saint is called the cause. And the cause was opened in 2017 by the Bishop of Rapid City. And I heard about it and thought about the possibility of doing a story, a, a long form documentary on this because it encover, encompasses a lot of issues. And um, I was able to get, secure funding for this and so we were off and running and we've been working on it since uh, 2018, the summer of 2018. Very cool. Now you are one of the producers. You also are a writer, which means you are also a researcher and and coordinator and and all those kind of things. And right. this was a really big production. I've seen the trailer. It's actually beautifully shot. It's very well done. Okay. Um, and this is going to air on ABC stations throughout the nation, right? Yes. There's a there's a group called the Interfaith Broadcasting Commission, and it's a, a kind of an umbrella group that that uh, coordinates with the three networks, ABC, NBC, CBS, to place eight hours of religious programming on major networks every year. They have a spring season, which is four documentaries, and then a fall season of four. And we are the last of the spring season this year. So uh, this is a not-for-profit religious documentary that's offered to stations. So every station has the right to accept it or to reject it or uh, not to carry it. So uh, it's not like it will be on uniformly Tuesday night at eight o'clock on, right. on every NBC, ABC yep. station. Yep, very good. Well, I know there was a lot that went into uh, producing this, including some very local ties beyond the production company. And I'm gonna talk with uh, the director, uh, Christopher Salvador here in just a right. minute and see just what went into producing this documentary. Sure. So now I'm joined by Christopher Salvador. And Christopher, this is a huge project, uh, not simply because it's telling the story that happened from so long ago, but because it also happened a long ways away. And you coordinated things between South Bend and there. So give me an idea of some of the challenges you went through in, in telling the story. Sure, well, we started the production in November of 2018, did a little bit of a site survey, met some of the people we're going to interview. I uh, started looking at the places where Black Elk lived, the places where he lived as a person, places where he traveled, the churches, uh, some of the kind of distant areas and vistas and things that we knew we could shoot with drones or what are going to make beautiful shots for nature. Uh, so we came back in May of 2019. And you can imagine the logistics of, you know, we went to the Cassidy Costume Collection locally and we just had so many different things laid out. It's like, we'll take two of those jackets and I want five of those hats. And by the time we got out there, we shipped, I think it was three or four different cases all the way out to South Dakota, as well as shipping equipment, lighting pieces, hardware for the camera, all of that had to be shipped out as well. And then when we arrived, we had a schedule of four days to do everything. Uh, so we were on a schedule at nine o'clock here. We knew by 10, 15, we had to be gone from one site and on to another, plus the coordinating of the actors. You know, two children and the mother are supposed to arrive at nine o'clock and it's 9.15 and they're not here yet. And then when they got there, okay, you're wearing this, you're wearing that, working with the camera crew. And that's kind of the, one of the delights as a director is working with the crew to bring something that's 150 years ago to life. I imagine it was quite the task to uh, coordinate, plus finding all this period stuff uh, to fit in. And then you get beyond that, now it becomes the magic of, of weaving it all together. And it's, tell me about your, your right. editor here and, hey, and the challenges that he went through. That's Larry Belinsky, and Larry's our post-production director and post-production editor, senior editor for the company. And he took hundreds of, of hours of footage and whittled it down to how long, 50? 58.53. 58, 58.53 58, with one commercial break in it. I and mean, you can imagine the archives from Marquette University were open to us. So Larry, scroll through the timeline a little bit. There are hundreds and hundreds of pictures that had to be accurate, that had to be correct. 
when the show was finished, we vetted it with experts around the country as well who said, yes, this picture is here. This one should go here instead of here. So lots of people put their eyes on this program before it, it makes its way. A lot of special effects. Black Elk himself had all kind of visions when he was a little boy and a young man. All of that had to be shot. Several of those sequences were shot here in South Bend using some local actors as well. Very good. Yeah, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And this is an interesting one. This was a church that was burned to the ground in the early 90s, yeah, and we had to recreate a scene from 1905. Uh, and we yeah, did that yeah, through yeah. green screen and then photographs of the church that existed, yeah, bringing, yeah. bringing it back to life. So it was oh, pretty cool. It's just absolutely amazing. Yeah. And you guys have done a great work, and I can't wait for other people to share in this story with you. And so thank you both for, for putting all the work into telling uh, this story. It's been a joy. It's been a blast. And we will connect with you guys as far as how you can watch it and where. And uh, we just look forward for you to you know, find out about this story and why it's so important uh, as uh, sainthood is a possibility. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. I'll tell you what, the documentary looks wonderful. Can't wait to see that. Kelsey, great job. And of course, who's doing a great job right now holding down Arizona? The Bergamot. Kelly's talking to them right now. Take a look. Every once in a while during quarantine, something really special happens. And today is that day because we have the Bergamot with us. And guys, so happy to see you, Jillian and Nate. Nate, your hair was not that long before, was it? <laughs> it wasn't. We're so glad to be with you. <laughs> oh, for sure. No, we are just, it's like, it just keeps growing. And it's like, you know, it's the quarantine hairdo these days. Yeah. You just got to go with whatever's going. <laughs> totally get it. Totally get it. Well, the last time I saw you guys was during the summer at the concert at the St. Joseph Barn. You guys were oh. fabulous. <laughs> it was so wonderful. But um, you were going to go on tour recently and it got cut short. Yes, so we well, we had planned a, a quite a big tour. After we saw you, we hit the road and we toured all the way through the summer, through December, and we kicked it back up really aggressively January 2020. And by the time we got to March like 14th, it was uh, pretty much all this stuff happened. So then we're like, okay, well, what do we do now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just been this... Um, this thing that's just kind of continued to evolve and continue to develop like any great journey. And, um, and so, yeah, at least this part of the journey, we found ourselves with a lot of sunny skies. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've been very, very lucky on that front, for sure. Well, what's wonderful is you're actually sharing those sunny skies with all of your fans on Facebook because your music really does inspire people and, and bring light and life into the lives of people. So you've been doing a kind of mini concert or performing on Facebook. Yes, so we call it Happy House. So we named this house the Happy House. And so we've been going live every single day since we got here. So today marks day 54 of going live on Facebook from the Happy House with this mini concert series. Sometimes we'll do a half an hour, sometimes we'll do an hour for people. And we'll, per we'll perform original songs off the new album, off older albums. We'll perform uh, some of our favorite covers. And then also we'll get requests in from fans of like for example last night we had a couple in Portland Oregon it was they're celebrating their seven-year wedding anniversary and they're like can you please play our wedding our first dance song so we learned it and played it for them and it was just so cool oh that's really awesome now speaking you mentioned friends and everything how are things with your friends back in Brooklyn because with the news and everything we know that Brooklyn and New York has been hit pretty hard yeah, for sure. I mean, we've been in touch with a lot of our friends in New York City, and I think that one of the things, uh, you know, life in New York City is definitely not conducive to dealing with uh, what's going on. I mean, we were living in a space where, I mean, we had 500 square feet to ourselves, and so it, a lot of our friends are kind of dealing with the same thing. I think that um, one of the things that we have done that with the Happiness House and the, the performances that we're doing is we're trying to create a space for those people to, uh, whether they be in New York City or across the coast, um, just uh, go to a place where they can kind of escape whatever their situation is. I think a lot of our friends in Brooklyn, I think, you know, it's just like looking out the window and hanging out the window and just trying to take in, um, you know, these moments. And I think it's taking everybody on a journey inward. And I think we're all having to go there. And, and, and so we try to create a space every night um, for all of our friends in New York and all of our friends across the country for them to come and just relax and kind of unplug from 
from, you know, all the news that we're having to face every day. And, uh, but the resilience of all of our friends in New York City is always, I mean, it never ceases to impress. Exactly. <laughs> now, before you, you uh, perform for us, are you guys going to get back on tour? That is the question we're all wondering. <laughs> yeah, I think the promise that we're making is we want to be one of the first bands that will be on the road when the road is available. We will be there. However, that is a moving target. And what do you think? I don't know. I, you couldn't have said it better. I mean, honestly, it's a day-to-day -day thing. And our number one is that everybody we know stays healthy, stays safe. So uh, one of the big things we're focusing on here at the Happy House is we are eating a lot of plants and micronutrients and we're working out four times a week. We're trying to keep our immune system high so that when the time comes that we can go back out when it's, you know, when there's the new norm happens for music that we'll be protected, we'll have very, very high immune systems to be able to help fight off whatever if something did happen so shows that gives our souls you know <laughs> that's where we get that's where the rubber meets the road and we are so missing it. it's missing seeing our fans and um you know we're known for giving hugs after shows it's just like that just missing that sense of connection that um that we're not really feeling uh i guess it's just creating a sense of anticipation we're looking forward to that time when it comes and and when it comes you know we'll be back on the road oh good and we can't wait for that but at least we have you guys here now. What are you going to play for us? Yeah, so this is a song called Mayflies, and it's the title track off of our new album, Mayflies, and you can stream it on Spotify now. Uh, and uh, here we are in our, this is our little makeshift studio, so we hope it sounds good. Love you guys. We love you, thank you. Devolution, tell the story. Dragonflies, all my glories. Oh, eventually, eh, 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 these summer nymphs swimming in the water, looking down. Oh, they taught us all oh, life goes with the eh, eh, eh. generations that come and go. We're going up now, we're going all night. Down, lay, down, lay, down, lay, down. The measure of the life we live, the love we take, and the love we give. Oh, and those mayflies, oh, mayflies. It's always great to see those Michiganians right there. The Bergamot, of course. Thanks, guys, for that and great performance, by the way. Now, the Clayton Garden Center is a place in North Webster where you can get all kinds of stuff. And of course, hey, the plants, any, any of the plants you got to get out there, seeds, whatever you need. Well, Kelsey's got the story. He's doing it right now. So if you're like me, when you've been stuck at home some and being, been able to get outside, it's really nice to see the sunshine. And we've been fortunate to have some sunny days here lately. And uh, to help us to better take advantage of that, we're going to talk to uh, Brad Clayton over at Clayton Garden Center in North Webster. And Brad, it's a beautiful sunny day today. It's not always the case in Michiana, but we're enjoying it. How about you? Yes, it's been a fantastic day. A little cold this morning, but we're doing all right. Yeah. So one of the things uh, that people are really into right now, since they have more time at home, is either taking care of the landscaping or maybe starting a garden for the first time. And, and you guys have been helping people with that for a long time. Can you give me a, just a little bit of the backstory of Clayton's? We were started in 1956 by my great grandparents. Um, we've been here ever since. Um, I literally grew up here my entire life. Um, so yeah, we've been doing this a long time. We still do bulk garden seed like we used to do 50 years ago. Um, so yeah, we've been doing this a very long time. That's very good. Now, with things kind of opening back up in the state, you guys have recently opened back up uh, the garden center and the greenhouses, but there are a little different rules right now, right? Yeah, uh, we were lucky to get open before uh, all the other businesses from the governor. And the things we are kind of asking is that you do follow that six foot social distancing as best as possible. And we are asking our customers to wear a mask or a face covering. I usually wear a bandana over my face. Uh, just something like that, just to kind of protect others. 
That's right. And if, if people want more information on those rules or get an idea of what that looks like at your place, you guys have a great video on your website. So that's an easy way to look at it. I haven't had a garden ever, uh, but we've been talking about it. Uh, so what would you tell people who are thinking about either getting started on a garden or, or even just the landscaping around the house right now, this time of year, what are people looking at? Right now, since we're finally kind of getting past that point of cold weather being through, um, your, your options are pretty much unlimited. Um, if you're a first time gardener, first time doing any type of landscape stuff, start small. Don't go into a big project right away. Maybe do a couple tomato plants, a couple peppers, and maybe a couple other things that you're interested in, but start small. Um, also, a lot of the times uh, you can start with the plants, like tomatoes and peppers, we have those plants available, or uh, some of the other things like beets or carrots and that kind of thing, you would want to start from seed. And uh, just like we said earlier, we still have a bulk seed counter. We can walk you through that step by step. We can tell you how to plant it. We can help you pick out those varieties to make to help you out. We see a lot of first time gardeners. The last several years it's been getting bigger. Now with the COVID-19 situation, more people are wanting to grow their own food again. So now we're, we can kind of go back and have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with you. Now, one of the cool things that I found on your website is you have a section called pollinators and natives, and you talk about the importance of pollinators, especially right now. Can you share with us a little bit of why that's so important and what that, what that is? Over the past, about, over about the past decade or so, pollinator health has really went down in, this, in, in our country. You've, you've seen those types of articles out there um, through the environmental side. So we do have a lot of, we have six different types of milkweed plants along with all kinds of other natives and other options to help the pollinators, not just the honeybees, but also the ground bees that are kind of the overlooked heroes in the pollinating world. Now, on your website, people can also connect with the uh, Million Pollinator Garden Challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, they can. And so that if, if they want to, they can register uh, their garden on there. That's a really cool way to stay connected to other people and kind of increase the pollinators as well. It's a very important thing. Um, so tell us, uh, besides offering all the wonderful plants that we see behind you and the seeds that you've talked about, do you guys also help with um, helping plan either, whether it be a garden or landscaping? Do you help people with that? Yep, you, we can also help you set up a plan, that kind of thing. Just bring us in pictures, diagrams, whatever you have. We can kind of help you um, figure out what works in your garden. Um, give us, you know, how much sun exposure, what facings, that kind of thing, north, south, east, west. We can help with that, and we can literally walk you through the whole process. That's very cool. Now, I can't wait to get out and see all those beautiful flowers behind you there in person. Uh, we look forward to a chance to get over there. Hopefully, I can get over there soon. Uh, my wife and I have uh, really been outside doing a lot of this, uh, taking care of our gardens and, and plants. Um, so it's been great. So thank you so much for what you're doing and the, the time. And hopefully uh, we'll see you again real soon. Yep, hopefully so. Nothing's better for social distancing than working in the yard. Well, as always, it's fun to give you a show, but it's always great to see folks. And man, it's been great to get out and about today. And of course, the fried chicken inside that building. I'm going back in here in a second, but I'll tell you next week's show, it's gonna be really special. I just got the phone with Josh here yesterday over at the Pottawatomie Zoo, and they're gonna be doing something really special for everybody. That's all I can say, but they're gonna be on the show next week. So until then, we hope you have a great week. Stay blessed, and of course, experience Michiana. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.